Good morning. Good Thursday morning to you. This is the dark side of the moon right here today. It looks like I got a black eye because the sun's not shining brightly. It hadn't quite come up over the clouds yet. It's 8.25 a.m. Central Standard Time. I live in Central Texas, USA. This is August the 25th, 2016. It's a nice day. I've actually got the windows open and a little fan on. And it's about 77 degrees inside my RV. This is an RV. I full-time RV and have done it for 23 years. My channel is Rusty78609 for you new people. And uh, anyway, I was looking through my uh, comments and... Uh, there's, there's several interesting comments. I, lo I love the comments. I really do. And uh, anyway, there's a couple of people that want some, uh, had some questions related to <clears throat> my traveling around. And one of the questions was, uh, when, was the, when was the last longest trip you took and where did you go? Last longest trip. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure what longest means, but in July, I took a trip for 10 days, 12, well, 12 days, actually. Went camping in my Prius. I went up to, uh, into New Mexico. I went to Daddle Wells, which is west of uh, Socorro, New Mexico, elevation about 68, 7,000 feet. And then over to El Moro uh, National Monument. You can camp for free there. Uh, at Daddle Wells, it cost you me senior citizen three fifty a night. I think might have been two dollars. I'm not sure, but anyway, it was cheap, cheap. I, that's why I go that way. And then El Moro's free. I stayed there a few days. Well, both of those I stayed a few days. Then went up to uh, uh, Blue Water Lake, I think state park, and uh, and then went on up to uh, uh, where did I go? Taos. Yeah, I did. I went up to, to uh, Wild Rivers, uh, north of Taos, and in, into Cuesta. And uh, yeah, it was a nice trip. All that's pretty country. And uh, have I? But I've gone on longer trips. My longest trip, a few years ago, I went for about a year and traveled around. I mean, I just didn't. I mean, I stopped in a lot of different places. I just I went out west. I went up into. Uh, Four Corners area, and well, of course, Colorado into Utah, uh, over into Nevada. Uh, stayed at a place called, I wish I could remember the name of it now, little bitty town. They had a mine there and different thing in Nevada. But uh, but anyway, you, it, traveling around, pull, I was pulling an RV then. And, you know, that's uh, that's work, but it was a lot of fun. Whenever you got to it, whenever I found a good place, I would stay for a few days. And that's what RVing is all about. You know, every now and then you think you're going to a great place and you pull in and it ain't great. So uh, you pull out and go find you another place that you like better. And that's why I like RVing. Uh, what else? Have I ever been to Quartzsite? Yes. Uh, I stayed there a couple of days and the place I stayed at, let me think, I think it's called High Jolly. High Jolly. It's about five miles out of the little town of Quartzsite. And it's a Bureau of Land Management place. You can stay for, you get a, you get a permit from the uh, camp host and you stay there, you can stay there free for 14 days. There's no hookups. It's, it's totally dry camping. And, uh, but it's fun. You, you, they have a, always have a big uh, covered area where they have all the, uh, they have arts and crafts and they have all kind of RVs on sale and shows. And I mean, there, there's, believe me, in the little area of Quartzsite, it's nothing but a, big market in the season i guarantee you but you can stay there for months uh but well let's see i think you got to buy a permit for that i'm not sure how much that is i never did that but uh but you can and uh, it's a lot of fun uh the the uh the swap meet in uh the little area of quartzite it's pretty neat the best time to be there i guess is january february march because that's kind of the high season for quartzite and, uh, but it is a neat place, and for those of you that want to do some inexpensive dry camping or basically free dry camping and see uh, every type of camping thing available in the whole universe, 
that's the place to go. And for those people at Full Time RV on the cheap, uh, that's their winter site. And it's really, it's exciting. I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, it's it's like a, a beehive. And, you know, of course, you can get water and you've got dump stations. So it's, uh, you know, of course, you've got to pay a fee for all that. But it's still cheap, even having to do that. It's still cheap, cheaper than any place else you can stay. And a lot of people go there in the winter, and then they get a, a state park pass, uh, say, from the state of uh, New Mexico for $225 for an out-of-state uh, camper. And then they can go to any state park and stay for free uh, for the for four, five, six months. It's good for a year, that pass. So basically, they're total cost for uh, camping for a year could be less than $500. You, know, you can't, you ain't going to live any cheaper than that. So uh, what else was that? Uh, do you stay, do you stay where you are for the winter? Yeah, I, I'm usually, this is my home base and this is a great place to be from December through the end of March because the weather is just perfect. I mean, it is. You know, you very rarely get any freezing days. We get a few, but not many. Snow, zero. Ice, a little, not much. Now, you might have a day, but you know, when it gets real cold, uh, two days later, it'll be, it may, may get below freezing for a day or two, and then back up into the 60s. You know, I mean, it just it's just really nice. And uh, you get very little or no snow, no no, no ice. Uh, it's just really nice. You don't get any shut-in days, so to speak. And uh, so you can travel around the Texas Hill Country and enjoy it. And as far as the summers, uh, you know, I, I've been, you know, going Prius camping. And I had been using my RV and going before I got this big old thing, and uh, which I don't pull anymore at all. And, uh, but... Uh, the best place to be in, uh, for me, and I've traveled around. I mean, you know, you can go into Colorado, you can go into you know Montana areas and all that sort of thing. But for me, I, I like uh, Taos, New Mexico area. Uh, you, know, you got Taos, Cuesta, Angel Fire, and Red River. Those are all tourist trap towns. Believe me, they're all total tourist traps, and I know that. However, you can find some fairly inexpensive. Uh, rentals by the month that are fully furnished with knives, forks, spoons, bed sheets, linens, washer, dryer, and uh, they're pretty nice. I've stayed in one two years ago, and uh, it was right off of Kit Carson Boulevard, about a quarter mile from the downtown square in Taos, and it was really nice, and it was like $800 a month. It was just a little one-bedroom efficiency thing, and it was perfect for me, perfect. It had everything I needed, and, and uh, for my exercise in the morning, I would get up and walk around through Kit Carson Park, back around, and then come down through the square, and you'd meet all people from all over the world. Just, I mean, I just loved it. I thought it was a great uh, way to spend a month or two, and fairly cheap. As far as cost it compared to RVing, uh, you know, if you were pulling an RV, it's probably not much, it's not much more expensive by the month because when you're pulling an RV, you know, you're getting about eight miles a gallon, or whether you got a motorhome or you're towing. And so, you know, you factor that in, plus your cost of camping, if you get a full hookup, and you may come out better uh, renting, I guarantee you. Now, as compared to Prius camping or camping in the Prius, uh, it, the Prius camping is a slam dunk, much more, much cheaper. But it also has a lot, lot, lot less conveniences. Number one, you don't have a toilet and a shower. And something about those I like, <laughs> even though I do go Prius camping, it's just an adventure. I just do it for the adventure. Anyway, there's another comment here along those same lines, if I can find it. And uh, it's from, uh, no, that's not it. But it's a question about, you know, here it is right here. Do you move around a lot? No, not anymore. I did for a long time, and I got tired of it. I did. Again, I've been doing this for full-time RVing for 23 years, and I did move around a lot. And at first, it was very exciting, a lot of fun, uh, you know, thrill a minute, so to speak, because everything was new. I got to go see a lot of new things, and you know, you wake up in a lot of new places. Yeah, uh, but I don't do, I don't move around a lot anymore. To answer to that question, no. Uh, have you traveled? Uh, that's a hard. Yeah, yes and no. Yeah, yeah, I've traveled RVing all over the Western U.S. 
And as far as, you know, I've been to Mexico, I've been to Canada, I've been to Mongolia, Russia, China, Japan, uh, Germany. Uh, did I mention, yeah, Russia? Uh, but, you know, most of that travel there, I was in the U.S. Peace Corps for, for a while, and I was in Mongolia. So from Mongolia, it was just a natural spring uh, jump to... Uh, go into Russia, which was just right on the northern border. And uh, I went to uh, Lake Baikal in Russia, which is a beautiful place. And, uh, you know, got to see some of the Russian lifestyle, which is basically like ours. You know, they, they work and uh, take care of their kids, and their politicians are just as goofy as ours. And, you know, they have the same complaints. We, everybody in the whole world does. China, a beautiful place. I could live in China, actually. Uh, even though we're told it's very, very crowded, and it can be in different places, but you get out in the countryside a little bit, and there's some great little small towns that are just, it's like the United States, you know, it's like living in New York, wow, you know, or you can live in some little town like I live near, so that's the same way in China, you know, whenever you're traveling, uh, you know, in your mind, you're going to a country, but in reality, you're going to a location, and uh, that makes all the difference, so pick a location, and go that you think you would enjoy. Pick an elevation or climate that you think you would enjoy and go. Uh, have you ever gone on paid vacation? Of course I have many times. Uh, if, you tra if you did travel, what area did you like? Uh, uh, I like China. I did. Uh, I like the, the, the smaller, area, smaller communities of China. Let me say that. Mongolia was okay, but Mongolia is pretty cold. Even the, the northern part of China is pretty cold too, but you come on down China's a huge country, and uh, you know you can find some places where the climate is very suitable. In the U.S., I like uh, where I am, and uh, northern New Mexico. That's my preference right now. And, and also, there's some beautiful areas in south, southern uh, Utah, and in Utah, the, the eastern part of northeastern part of Utah, the uh, northwestern, or excuse me, central western Utah. There's some beautiful places. Uh, northern Nevada is beautiful. Of course, Montana, Oregon, and all that area is beautiful. Uh, northern California. Uh, you know, you know what areas do I like? It, 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 all of them. <laughs> A lot of them. Uh, what surprised you? Who did you meet? Uh, you know, what surprised me, I guess, after I got to reflecting on my travels, was uh, how different every state in the United States is. It's almost like every state is a different country because they all have different political views, different uh, ways of communicating, uh, the, the, the speech uh, sounds a little different in, in each state, uh, you know, and so it's just, it's that, that kind of surprised me, yeah, that, I, I didn't know that we were that different because we've got all these commonalities with these uh, fast food chains and Walmarts and all the things that should make us uh, basically all the same, and, and we are in a lot of ways, but I mean, there are differences and surprisingly large differences between each state. You know what they, what their uh, mor morals are. I mean, not morals so much, but their uh, ways of uh, uh, communicating. I guess you'd say. I'm not sure that's a good way to say it. Uh, a lot of what? Who did I meet? I mean, a lot of different people from all over the world. Uh, dancing is good exercise. Do you dance? I used to dance a lot. I haven't danced in years. I used to be a pretty good dancer, but uh, you know, when I grew up, that was a way of life. We'd go to dances every Friday night and Saturday night, and there was Linda now, Cotton Patch, Wee Satch. Uh, Green Owl, uh, uh, let's see, uh, it was a something something hall, uh, Lentz Hall. I mean, we used to go to all of them, and, and uh, every Friday and Saturday night we'd go dancing from uh, nine. Well, let's see, I think the dances started at around nine, yeah, nine till midnight, and from nine to midnight we'd be slinging our legs with the best of them. Uh, do I dance? Da, 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 da. That's about it. Okay. <coughs> So anyway, having said all that, you found out a little bit about me and some of the things I've traveled, some of the places I've traveled. And all I can tell you is if, you know, if you can, you know, travel is a, is a great way to, you know, broaden your perspective. All of a sudden, you're not so narrow-minded. You don't really get excited or, or, or pick at somebody that has on a pink shirt, so to speak. Uh, if a man's wearing a pink shirt, in Texas, oh my God, uh, you know, you could get shot for that. Do I have a pink shirt? Yeah, the reason I got it, because it was cheap. And I didn't even think about it, because I've traveled enough to know that I don't give a damn, all right? And uh, 
but it, it does. It, it's it's uh, travel is uh, deadly to narrow mindedness. I mean, all of a sudden you just kind of open your mind and realize that people are people and every, everybody's different and everybody's got a different way of life. Most countries have a different religion. And is that bad? No, it's just the way it is. And so just get on board and enjoy the ride. So anyway, having said all that, uh, thumbs up, carpe diem, adios, bye bye. That's some compromise. <laughs> oh, thank all of y'all for subscribing and uh, thank all y'all for uh, your comments. Bye bye.